Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. All right, we have to start out with a, cel a personal celebration of mine. Two years and almost one month since I broke both my wrists, I bought myself a new watch with a more slender band because I normally wear a pretty thick band. I like metal bands and I'm able to wear it. Now my wrists have given me some, you know, you know, long time healing. And so even though the left one isn't where it was in the beginning, it is really good and I can fit a watch on it. So I've been wearing it for a couple of days, just testing it to see if it's gonna bother me and it's working. So I am a watch person, it's jewelry to me. So I am thrilled to be able to put my watch on. It's like when I could put my ring on again, although in the heat of the summer, it doesn't work so well, but <laughs> anyways, thank you for taking, letting me indulge myself for a little celebration. Okay, let's go first to Secret Lives of Color block 50. We're on 50. There are 75 blocks that we're doing, so we get 25 more. So, hey, we are two thirds of the way through this. Pretty exciting. We're in the blue section. We still have one more block after this for the blue section. And today it is electric blue. Now, I happen to find a fabric with blue in it. This blue in that triangle fabric actually matches perfectly. Let me see if I can show you. So there we go. So it is, it is like a perfect match. So electric blue is an interesting chapter. It's super interesting. It starts out with a nuclear explosion in Chernobyl in Russia, which is now in, U which is now in Ukraine. Uh, Chernobyl is in Ukraine now. Uh, it starts out with that. It starts, it talks about how electric, electric blue, that color blue, that sort of light blue is how electricity is depicted. Um, it mentions the movie, The Matrix, which is one of my favorite sort of um, sci-fi movies, if you will. <laughs> so anyways, you're going to enjoy the chapter. I did anyways. And here is my, I love this combo, this light blue and that lime green. I'm thinking a whole quilt of, of some blocks like that. I don't know. And I, I do that all the time, right? You see that color combinations, you're like, ooh, that's, that's a good one. I need to make more of those and see how they all go together. Uh, you know, of course, can't make everything. <laughs> I wish I could. So today is my day on Bev's book tour, but we're gonna talk about a few other things before we get to the book tour. So that will be at the end. And you wanna stay at the end because somebody will be getting one of the, her copies of her book. So I wanna tell you about that. All right, let's do the nature walk. Here is the blue one. A lot of you love blue. This is what I hear, blue, blue, everything blue. So you're having a little trouble finding the blue panel right now. So you're gonna have to like search around a bit. Um, Hen and Chick Studio had a few left uh, the other day. I linked to somebody, so just check around and ask. But I'm making the pink and green version, and we were doing last week all of the squat blocks because <laughs> it was a typo in the pattern. It says squat and says square, and I'm going with it because I think it's fun. Up and down, up and down. <laughs> so these are the blocks. Now I laid mine all out around the center so that I could take a look, see how it is. They're balanced with the stripe frame and the green, so that, that that darker green frame I just showed you, they're balanced around so you don't have a clump of them in one corner. So that's how I laid it out. You can look at the picture and use it as a guide or just you know put them up. So for me, what I'm going to do now is take a whole row and, um, you know, pin them so I can just sew the top and bottom, sew the sides as I'm doing other things. So it doesn't have to take up the design wall because there's stuff, other stuff I want to put up there during the week. So I will clip them and just sew them as I go along. But first I will take a picture. That way I can reference it and be sure I've got things in the right order before I start. And I'll probably clip a little note to the stack that says top, bottom, left side, right side. And then that way I can sew it. And if you're doing the blue version, blue, blue, everything blue, here is that one. Fun, right? It is coming together. It is a quick quilt uh, and nice size. Now, if you wanted it bigger, you could, of course, put a border on after the end, but you can see the border that's on here are a cream and then one other strip. But if you really wanted it a lot bigger than that, you could add yourself another border. 
Okay, I have got, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, there's always fun things. Like we talked about on Saturday, there's always tons of fun things that I want to do that I can't do at all. But <laughs> sometimes I can maybe squeeze in one block. And that's kind of my goal for this week because it's shark week. And for years I have wanted to do a shark block on shark week. And so I have Elizabeth Hartman's um, let's go, social sharks. <laughs> <laughs> she has great names for her patterns, social sharks. And I got this bundle that came, I think in one of the fat quarter shops. So samplers, it's a bundle of her um, kitchen window woven. So let's take a look at options because I want to do one shark block this week. I want to cut it out and I want a background. So I've got some navy options and some gray options. Hers is done on gray. So she's got gray. It's probably like this gray that we, used before you know something similar to this and then in here since i'm just going to do one and i will probably uh you know like the lime is so cool and i've also got three blue options over here so first of all i want to just pick the plaid ah they're all good they're all good do i want a pink shark an orange shark a blue shark they just look so good. Now she's got so many shown here on the cover so you can really see it's a purple shark. A light. Okay, so these two I probably won't do. I'm thinking I put it in my room for the summer. So I'm leaning towards, maybe that's an orange one that's so cool, but leaning towards maybe one of the blues, um, one of the blue sharks or a yellow shark, one of these. Okay, so there's where I'm leaning. This is kind of a nice one. It's got, and so is this one. They give sort of that, go in with my red, white, and blue stuff. So maybe I'll go for one of those two. I hope this is enough. Hopefully this will be enough, this one piece. I think it's like a fat eighth. Yeah, so it's not a very big piece. I'll have to check that out. Okay, his little teeth, look at those. Aren't those fabulous? Ah, so cute. All right, now what about background? Do you like it on the gray? And if it's on gray, I have three shades. So this gray, the light gray, or this other dark gray. Okay, so those are like nice charcoal. Then I've got navy, so we'd be like in the water. I am leaning towards the navy. Navy with the little um, things on it, which is like as uh, Christopher Thomas's Blossom, which is a basic. These two were from the Heartfelt um, Charity Quilt. And so there's floral. Okay, so I'm probably going to not do the floral, not compete with the plaid. And here's the, this, this has nice scale on it, but I think I'm going to do this one. I think I'll go with the navy and the blossom. And so what I will do is get the shark block, get one block cut, and then I'll make it into a pillow. So I think these are the ones. Fun. You have to have fun. Have to have fun. All right, let's do a mail call and then we'll do the book tour. So mail call I have from Kathleen in New York. She sent me some aqua two and a half inch squares for my checkerboard quilt. Thank you so much. This is awesome. This is so awesome, guys, because I am getting a nicer variety now. So everything is really going to be so fun to have those different, different fabrics in it. This is a card from Peggy in Wisconsin. Look how pretty that is. And she sent me the two and a half inch squares in aqua. She sent me some of those. And she sent me some salvages. And she says on here, there's one with red glasses in here. And I should have pulled that out. I should have. Let's see if I can find it real quick. There must, oh, I think she means the penguins. That's what she means. These guys, he's got the monkeys or whatever they are, the little critters. Whoops, there. So they've got red glasses. Ah, so cute. Thank you, Peggy. <laughs> Thank you, Peggy. <laughs> and then the last one is from Wendy in Maryland. And she sent me this card, which I'll tell you about this in a second, plus some salvages and some aqua fabrics. So that is awesome. But the card is something she picked up from some alpaca farmers that they have woven this from the alpaca fur. And she sent me a write-up about their farm. And she got this at her farmer's market. It is so cool. Look at that. So you see the heart? 
Ah, thank you, everybody. Mwah. It is wonderful. All right, let's do the book tour. Make it mini. Whoops. <laughs> Make it mini with Bev um, McCulloch, and she has just done both. She has just done my uh, book tour recently, so I am doing her book tour. Isn't this darling? Ah, oh, it's got such cute projects, and I did a little video to show you the project. So let's take a look. Let's look at the projects in Bev's gorgeous book, Make It Mini. Isn't this darling? Oh my goodness, it's so sweet. Okay, she did a nice little signature for me in the book. And then, you know, she's got all this super cool embroidery added to the projects. And so I'm just going to flip through the pages, let you see, you know, there's super instructions. She's with the same publisher I am. Gives you a whole diagram for what you're stitching. Oh, look at these, look at this heart. With the embroidery ah oh, so pretty there's that's in the middle of this particular project okay i'm reading upside down so i'm not getting all the this is, i'm on the daisy farm okay so that's mine and see the up close she's got how she did her petals which are super beautiful uh, she does a lot more hand stitching than i do Okay, so this is stepping stones with the sweet little embroidery on the sides. I like that navy background or that blue background. Look at this. Look at this stitching. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, here, I have to get closer. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? <gasps> oh, that is very pretty. Okay, this is the other one I thought about doing, the Blooming Heart. I thought about that one. That was my, almost did that one. I might have to come back and do that one. Okay, here we have, whoops, this is the beautiful day. I love that sort of plaid with the blue and the yellow. It's got a little bee embroidery. Look at this. Look, so pretty. Okay, got the honeycombs on the hexy flowers. And let's see, we have another little house with the Dresden plate. She loves Dresden plate. She's done a lot of different things with that. And let's see what we got going here. Oh, some other beautiful flowers. So this embroidery is really gorgeous. Look at that. Uh, all by hand. Yes, and I know you do, you computer people on your machines, you could do that too. And then here it is, the sweet oranges from the cover. Or sweet orchard, I think is what it's called. I love that too. I would like to make that. The, the um, ball jar with the flowers, that was another favorite of mine. Oh, and then here's super cute little patchwork with adding some sayings on it. I think that's her machine too on there. The beautiful wreath in the middle. And that's a wrap. So she's got details in the back on transferring designs and things like that so that you can get it nice. Okay, you're going to want make it mini. They're so cute. And here is my version. <gasps> So fun. The little barn just spoke to me. That little barn I thought is the most darling thing ever. And a little pink barn, got to have a little pink barn. And it's all done with Morrison Park, except for this blue, which is Bev's fabric. She sent me that piece. And then this is, um, I think a blossom and then hers, but everything else here is birdsong fabric. There's hers on the binding. But what I discovered is this little size uh, and the batting I used is really thin. I can put the needle minders on it. So Bev has some super cute needle minders and this, I can put them on here and hang it up. So let me just put this guy on there. I have to set it down here. So here we go. I have put her needle minders on there. So this is her pink flamingo, her big sunflower, the little truck with the flowers, isn't that perfect? And the little stump with the bird on it, which I think is brand new. She just sent me that one. And see the magnet is on the back. There we go. Now I did a little video also of me stitching these flowers. So let's take a look at that. Let's start super up close with these guys. So what I'm doing is similar to what Bev has in her book, although maybe a little looser and not quite as structured. So I am going to draw, and I'll do this in a minute, I will draw the shape onto the fabric. I'll do one more flower down here. But I'm doing uh, an outline 
in like a running stitch or back stitch. So I'll outline that petal and then I will go in and do a satin stitch but a very loose satin stitch almost like if you were doing thread painting on the machine where you go back and forth back and forth so I've got layers of it and then I'll come back in and fill in some other layers so that it's a bit more unstructured than a regular satin stitch I wanted to have that um, sort of soft feel to it and then of course French knots I think I'm going to add a few more French knots Bev's is amazing she has a ton of French knots and I'm just and they're just so pretty I love French knots I am using three strands of Aurifil floss so there's the floss and I will this is six strands floss just like regular floss and I am using just uh, three strands at a time for both the French knots and the um, and the petals so drawing it on here I'm doing it free freehand free form I'm not doing a template or anything this one has six petals this one has five I'll probably do another with five thinking of where my center is I'm not drawing a center this is a, a heat away or you know you put heat and it'll go away but I'm pretty much covering it but I don't need to draw the center for those I just need to draw my first petal so I'm going to draw my first petal and then let's see just kind of freeform them that's four petals and then here's the fifth one so these guys are now drawn and those are the that's that's where I'll fill in and create just like these so I don't know if you there I think you can see them I get a little bit closer there yeah so you can see them pretty good okay now to do the back stitch, or you could do a running stitch sort of along the edge. I don't know all the perfect terminology for this, but basically I'm taking, I'll start at the, the bottom of a petal. We'll just take this one here. So this petal that my thumb is on, and I will come up right on that line, and I'm going to create an outline. So I'm going to go back and then I'm doing all of this between the top and the batting. I'm not taking it to the back. You can just see the knots on the back, but I'm not doing all the line work on the back. That's just inside. I think it makes it a little easier to stitch it. So once again, just doing some basic outline. So I'm taking the needle just sort of past the previous step and coming forward. You can make them shorter. I'm making them kind of long. Um, because they're just to give me a place to fill in. I think it makes the petal crisper to have that outline. So I'll do the outline all the way around here. So I'll just go ahead and finish that because then I want to show you how I'm filling it in, which is really freeform. I don't do this type of embroidery very much. I mean, I haven't done a lot of embroidery lately at all. So this was super fun to have her book with these little projects and a touch of embroidery to them. Okay, so I'm coming around to the point, back to the point of this flower petal. And when I get there, I do have to close up because I was a little far off. So I want to close up the, the other, uh, the actual point, get it all the way clean. All right, so now I'm going to pull the needle up like it's about half or maybe a little under half of the distance and then I will be doing the satin stitch the this loose satin stitch so I'm coming back to the point and then going up to the midway back to the point for the long these are long stitches but there's a wall hanging and they're not going to get caught on anything and so I'm basically filling this in and then I will come about, and I'm not being real even, so I'm sort of, you know, working it. And I might shift over a little bit and then fill in another part here. So I'm hoping you can see all that come up. And so the bottom half of this is pretty much done. Now I want to start filling in the top half and making it very loose. I will come, like, not right to the edge, but come into those stitches. So I think that that gives it the <clears throat> thread painting look is to come into the stitches. So there we go. And I'm almost out of thread for this. I don't know that I can finish the whole thing. But I, my goal is to make it look fairly full. 
And remember, I'm scooting along here. I'm going to show you the back. I'm scooting along underneath, so I'm not coming all the way to the back side. All right, so maybe I can get another one here. I think another one or two. And it's probably going to need maybe one or two more stitches to have this look full. But there would be where I am for that one. See, it needs a little bit more over here. So now to the fun part, you can go to my website today. Link is down below. Plus it is in the email you will get if you're signed up for emails and you can leave me a comment there, which I tell you there what you have to answer and someone will get a copy of Bev's Darling book. These little projects are just perfect to tuck into any kind of spot, give as gifts. Ah, so cute. Okay, and today you're going to work on your bird song squares to go all the way around. If you haven't finished them, work on finishing them and starting to set them so that we can have completed quilts. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.